Hey guys, welcome to the Loveland Trials, the world's toughest electric car test. And today we're gonna drive that e-golf from here in Boulder at 5,000 feet above sea level up a mountain to the top of the Loveland Pass, which is a 12,000 feet above sea level. And Tommy, why are you holding that generator? Um, because it's not gonna make it. What do you mean it's not gonna make it? Well, it, it's, it's, it doesn't have a big enough battery. So that's your emergency this plan? This is my solution, yes. But let me tell you about the numbers to give you a better understanding. This 2019 Volkswagen e-Golf has an EPA estimated range of 125 miles, but that 125 miles certainly doesn't come from testing up a literal mountain at freeway speed. So it's gonna be significantly less than that. And here is a predicament. You see, a few months back, we ran this exact same test in a Nissan Leaf Plus and a Tesla Model 3. And they both used 150 miles of range to go there and back. And this is 125 miles of range, so we're gonna be stuck. Since we're potentially gonna get stuck, I am using the Tesla Model X as the chase vehicle for this video because this has a range of 325 miles. So we're not reviewing the Model X, we're just using it as a support vehicle when things inevitably go wrong, which I suspect they will. All right, Tony, here's your emergency backup. Throw it in the uh, golf. No, no, I'm not taking that. What do you mean? That's, well, that's your backup when you run out of juice. Yeah, but every ounce counts when I'm going up a mountain in an EV. So why don't we stick that in the Model X and you can deal with it. Hmm. All right, so, <laughs> so because this weighs like 50 pounds, you think that's gonna make a difference? I don't know, it might. All right, I'll take it. Seriously, we're having a bit of fun, but we really doubt that that golf is gonna make it up to the top of Loveland Pass, which is about 70 miles, let alone up and back. So this may be our only way to get that golf back home. And the issue of course is that this generator, while it will charge the golf, will do it at about three miles an hour. So if he runs out of juice, God, I can't even contemplate how long it would take to get enough energy to actually make it to the top of the pass and back. My battery is fully topped up all the way, 100%. And the EPA says this car has a range of 125 miles, but the car is reading 147 miles of range, which makes it seem like we can do this test because if the Leaf extended range and the Model 3 both used about 150 miles of range, 147 should be enough, right? Well, not quite because this range number decreases quickly when you start moving, when you start accelerating. And I do believe that it really is closer to 125 miles of range. So how am I gonna make it? Well, I do have a couple of strategies. So my first strategy is to engage Eco Plus mode. So right now I'm in normal, but I'm gonna go from normal to Eco to Eco Plus. Now, what do the different modes do? Well, in normal mode, I can do zero to 60 in just over nine seconds with a top speed of 85 miles an hour. Switch it into Eco mode, zero to 60 is 13 seconds with a top speed of 72, but when I go into Eco Plus, I am limited to just 56 miles an hour. It turns off the climate control. It really limits acceleration, and it's gonna give me the best range. And you can see here that just from going to Eco Plus from normal, the range has jumped up from 147 to 151. But as we start accelerating, as we start getting on the highway and going up the hill, that's gonna drop really quickly. Tommy has by far the harder job today. I get to drive in comfort at any speed I want and listen to anything I want and adjust anything I want. So I actually have my climate control on, I'm listening to the radio, I can accelerate as hard as I want, I can go up to this vehicle's top speed of 155 and I will still have enough range to get to the top of Loveland Pass 
and back and not have to sweat it. You know, there's an old saying with real estate, it's about location, location, location. And with electric cars, it's about range, range, range. And that's why we're doing the Loveland Trials, because it's really a test of uh, three things. First and foremost, it's a test of range. See if it can actually go up a very steep grade for a significant amount of miles and have enough battery to get us back home, you know, the way that you would drive. Any vehicle that you see around me here that has an internal combustion engine could do this on one tank of gas and have enough left over to take you to work the next day. So we're putting it up against the standard that already exists. Number two, electric cars, for better or worse, have become synonymous to some extent with autonomy. So for instance, this Tesla has autopilot, uh, which is not level five autonomy. It's actually barely level two autonomy, but the Golf has a very similar set of safety features that allow it to start to drive itself. So when we're on the highway, we're also gonna test the Golf's ability to drive itself. Finally, it's about how long it takes to recharge an electric car because with a regular internal combustion engine car, you'd pump the gas station and in about two minutes, you'd be ready to go again. But with electric cars, it's much more complicated. So after Tommy tells you a little bit more about the e-Golf, you'll find out just how complicated it can be. So now the funny thing about the Golf is I can actually change the range depending on uh, what kind of equipment I have on. So right now our range is 112 miles, but if I turn on, God forbid, just for a sec, ready? The climate control, that's gonna drop down to, let me go to normal mode, with the climate control 106 miles. And you can see potential gain, climate control. Hey Tommy, you read me. How are you doing? So uh, how nervous are you that you're gonna make it to the top and back? with uh, only 125 miles range. Yeah, super nervous. I mean, if the Leaf and the Model 3 both used 150, 153 miles of range, I don't I don't think we're gonna do it because it's 77.1 miles to the top of Loveland, but unfortunately the way back you'd think would be all downhill. It's actually got some pretty rolling parts coming into Boulder, and then it's got even some steep uphills. Well, you know, I was just thinking, it's crazy dangerous to run out of electricity along the highway and I'd hate for you to be in that position especially with a videographer as well in that car so you think it might be worth uh, topping up uh, in Golden before we go up the mountain? I mean we can but wouldn't that kind of ruin our tests for future cars if we if we top up? I mean I feel like there has to be some kind of range standard where if a car is under a certain amount of range we are allowed to top it up. All right let's do this since that is technically a California compliance car. Levels of this test, right? Level one is any car that has, let's say, 200 miles of range or more, which is now the current crop of EVs, they have to make it to the top of the Loveland Pass and back. And anything that's basically a compliance car, which is, you know, it has less than 200 miles of range, uh, we get to stop and top it off just so that we're not endangering ourselves or the vehicles. All right, so we'll stop at the DC Fast Charger in Golden and go from there. So we're here at the Colorado Mills shopping mall and somewhere in here there should be an Electrify America charging station. The question is, Google does not quite know where. Ah, ah I found it, I found it. It's right here, we're good, we found it. Check it out, we made it. Now let's take a look actually, Matt, do you wanna come here? Um, our, our distance, 31.8 miles, which is pretty good. What's the range remaining? 114, oh wait, 112. So if I'm being honest, it kind of pogos around a little bit, but let's see if we beat our estimate. So we started with 151 minus 32, no. So not quite with what the computer says we should be at, but Still actually doing pretty well, I'm pretty pleased. Now, we're gonna top off here, the highway is just behind us, and then from there on out, it's just gonna be a haul. I mean, it's gonna be a slog up the mountain. This is actually the craziest thing I've ever seen. So we've seen DC fast chargers in our area. They're typically 50 kilowatts, yeah. which is pretty quick. That would 
fill this car up in theory in under an hour completely, right? Yeah. If you were totally empty. Right. This station yeah. rated up to 350 kilowatts. 350! And I believe our little e-golf here is only rated up to 50 kilowatts. Right. So while this charger is like the McLaren of chargers, it's still a golf. Plug it in, would you? Well, Plug in the McLaren of chargers or the Ferrari of chargers. So or the Porsche of chargers, whatever I, you want to call it. I was it. reading, you see how thick this is? You know why that is? So you can choke up. Elephant with it? No, it's because it's water cooled. Oh. Uh, pay by credit card or mobile wallet. All right, I have my mobile wallet set up. Once again. Oop, oh, here we go. Authorizing, please wait. Card does not exist. Okay, so I had this issue yesterday too. So I have an account. It's four dollars a month, and it should give me really cheap charging here. But the app is just kaput. Here, let's do, let's use app. Processing payment. Processing payment. There payment you go. Declined. Let me try my card. Okay, try your card. Yeah, you were reading in your PlugShare? Yeah, my PlugShare app that um, someone else was having issues yeah. a few days ago and they had to call Electrify America and they got it to work within 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like a commercial for Tesla, for God's sakes. Hey guys, do you have trouble with your Electrify America power station? Will it not process your credit card? Will it not take your Apple Pay? Does your app not work? Well, if so, try Tesla. It's simple. So it's been processing my payment for like five minutes and I worried it stole my credit card info, so I have to call Electrify America. <laughs> Thank you for calling Electrify America. This is Candace, how can I help you? Hey Candace, how you doing? Would it be better if we just try plugging it into another unit? Would that be helpful? We'll try that. Um, okay. Yeah, let me move it. Ha, ah, authorized. Awesome. Oh, good. Candace, I appreciate your help, thank you. Yeah, absolutely, no problem. And if you do get any more of those payment issues, feel free to call us. We're here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Awesome. Okay, well thank you, I appreciate it. Have a great day. So it's initiating. How long does it take before it starts? Probably shouldn't have hung up. Yeah. It, it usually starts pretty quick. Charging session error. <laughs> Charging has been interrupted. Please unplug to start a new session reconnect. <laughs> okay, let me call Kansas back. You know what, Tommy? Maybe we'll be driving right back to Boulder. <laughs> Actually, there's a buzzing sound. I think that's good, Tommy. Is it? I'm hoping that's good. Now there's a... <laughs> <laughs> Is that the sound of charging? So look, there you go. So the e-golf doesn't tell me what percentage we're at, but Electrify America knows. So we're at 78% charging at 33 kilowatts. Let's just be clear. With superchargers, it tells you on my app how many are available. It does that here. Okay. Okay, so it, it does, does that. that. Yeah. And then you just pull up basically plug it in and walk away and it does everything else. Yep. And then when you're unplugged, it charges your credit card. Right. There's no initiating anything, it's all part of it. But this is like a gas station. You know, you go up. Like a very loud gas station. Yeah, but it's it's easy. Like, it's not a hard thing to do. Dude, we've been here for 15 minutes. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's some niggles here and there, but we got it to work. The important part is we're charging the car. Everything is happy, huh? Electrify America is actually funded by Volkswagen. It was part of the Volkswagen diesel. Gate settlement. Yep, yep. So they basically had to spend a billion dollars. Two billion in, in, in electrification and, yeah. and clean fuels. Yeah, so because of the whole diesel gate mess, we now are here listening to that squirrel of a charging station fill up this much cleaner e-golf. Yeah, so we've gone 31 miles to get here. It's 50 miles to the top of Loveland Pass. And then the closest DC fast charger from there is 20 miles and actually Frisco. Now I'm hoping we can go from here in Golden to the top of Loveland Pass and then back to Golden, which is 100 miles. Keep in mind, the 50 on the way back is going to be mostly downhill. Yeah, and I'm hoping we could do more than that. I mean, I'm hoping we can go to the top of Loveland Pass and get all the way back to Boulder on this one charge. I think that's a bold move. I mean, we can try it, but yeah, that's, I, that's I think, look, I think we're going to be totally empty by the time we get to the top of Loveland Pass. Okay, so our final state of charge here looks like 96%.
Um, now we're going really slow, 13 kilowatts, but we started at 77. Look, charge time, 17 minutes. So right. 20% in 17 minutes. Of yeah. course, we were pretty full. Ooh, now exactly 20%. Yeah. So 6.7 kilowatt hours, uh, $4.57. All right, let's go and run the Loveland Trials, finally. So we've been on the road for about three miles now up I-70. Uh, I'm limited to 60 miles an hour in my Eco Plus mode. Climate control off, radio off, the most efficient I can make the car. Now we started with an um, economy of 4.3. In the first three miles, we're already down to 3.9. And the range is down to 123 from like 143. So we lost about 20 miles of range in roughly three or four miles. All right, this is where it really starts to bite. This is Floyd Hill. It's the first uphill part of I-70 when you get outside of Golden. And for the most part, we're gonna have about maybe five, six miles of straight uphill from here. Then it kind of flattens out. Then there's a little bit of a downhill where he'll have the opportunity to actually regen some more power, and so will I. And then once you're at Idaho Springs, it's pretty much all uphill to about 12,000 feet at the top of the Loveland Pass. Range is down to 104 miles. I'm maxed out at my 40% of uh, allowed acceleration in eco mode, but I'm still holding 60 miles an hour, which is good. The Tesla actually gives you a really good power output graph. And normally when you're driving this, you're using about 300 watts per minute. And if you look up here, going up Floyd Hill, I'm almost at 800, maybe approaching 900 watts per minute. All right, Tommy, we're coming up to the exit of uh, Loveland Pass, one mile. So how much battery you got left? If I'm being honest, it's not not brilliant. Um, so the car says 41 miles of range. Uh, it's 77 miles back to get back home. Battery percentage can't be more than 30, 35%. Wow, so you've used like 90 miles of range over the last 30 miles. 100 miles of range in the last 30 or 40 miles, yes. Four miles to the summit of Loveland Pass, we have exited the freeway. Now it's just a two-lane road up to the top of the Continental Divide. 36 miles of range. I, if I had to guess, maybe 27% battery remaining. Just driving it very conservatively. On the good side, though, we're in the twisties now, and this is where the e-golf really shines, because a lot of people give this car crud because it's a converted gas car that's been made electric and yes that does come with problems but the car they converted is the seventh generation Volkswagen Golf which is a truly brilliant car and when you add electricity to it you get instant torque you get a immediate throttle response and you still get the absolutely incredible platform that underlies the seventh generation Golf it's just such a fun little car to drive All right, I'm at the top of Loveland Pass. I came ahead of Tommy. I'm really curious as to see how much power he's got. When we got off the highway, he had about 40 miles of range left. It's four miles from the highway to the top, which isn't a lot. So you'd think that he should have ugh, 40 miles or something like that left. So, what's the verdict, dude? At 25 miles of range remaining, maybe 20% battery left. Whoa! So do you think we could have made it up here without topping off? Probably, but we'd be at like zero. Yeah. Yeah, I think we'd probably be at nothing, and we still have to get back to Golden, and probably back to Boulder, so let's see if we can make it all the way down. Yeah, I'm freezing. It's cold up here. How was the driving on the highway? Yeah, beautiful. It's yeah. a great car to drive, super easy to drive. A little slow in Eco Plus mode. We could only do about 60, but I made it up here no problems. Now it's just a matter of making it down. Now, if we were going to Keystone, it's all downhill from here. We'd make it, no issues, um, which we probably should do, but we're crazy, so we're going to try to make it back 77 miles on 25 miles of range. Yeah, it's the uh, Loveland Trials, not the Keystone Trials. Yep. Yeah. 
I do have a couple more ways to increase my potential range in this e-golf. I'm talking about regenerative braking. Now, when I put this vehicle into drive, select Eco Plus mode, and let off the throttle, it pretty much just coasts along like any other car. It's not until I hit the brake that I'll start regenerating power back into the battery, or as Volkswagen calls it, recuperation. But by taking the gear selector here and flicking it left or right, I can actually change the recuperation amount that charges back into the battery. And I have three different stages of recuperation, stage three being the most aggressive. But I also have a fourth stage, which is called B. So when I select B here on the shifter, it's gonna give me the max amount of regenerative braking. It's gonna slow the car down a lot and put a lot of power back into the battery. Now the e-golf comes with a whole array of assist systems or um, essentially level two assistance systems. So lane assist, blind spot monitor, rear traffic alert, front assist. Let me turn on my lane assist and my adaptive cruise control as well, which is just here on the steering wheel. So let's set at the speed limit. Good lane markings, take the hands off the wheel. I'm going toward that lane, let's see if it corrects, which it does. It's keeping me a little bit too far to the left of the lane but it is holding me. Hands still off the wheel, just ready to take control at any time though. Please take over steering is what it says. Okay, so let me do it for a few seconds there, which was all right. Let's see, is it gonna keep turning? Whoa, a little bit of an overcorrection, but it does work. Now it's not as aggressive as auto steer in the Tesla, and it also loses the lanes more frequently, but um, this is less of like a level two driving assistance and more of a if, you want to just cruise down the highway, still focused on the road, and just happen to veer out for a little bit, it'll catch your system. All right, Tommy, last downhill heading into Golden. What's your state of charge? Well, I have 32 miles of range left. Well, this is going to be a nail biter, I think, getting to Boulder, because um, Boulder is probably about 20 miles, but it's also up and downhill. Yeah, try again. It's actually 35 miles to Boulder to our office. Let's see how it goes once we get to Golden and we'll go from there. Okay, well, let's stop at the gas station and then we'll uh, reassess once we get down this hill, see how much range you have left. Got it. Tommy, it's been a long day. The sun's going down and I'm getting a little tired. So how much range do you have? So 51 miles of range, according to the computer, we just got down off the big mountain. So now it's kind of rolling to Boulder to our offices, but it's 25 miles. And both you and I both know that that 51 miles of range could be 51 or it could be seven. Yeah, that's 51 <laughs> electric car miles, which have nothing whatsoever to do with like real miles. Look at this though. I mean, we're just barely over the red in terms of our charge state. Oh wow. That's gotta be like 10, 15% now. Yeah. So it's getting uh, a nail biter. getting down to the wire for sure. Now I'm 49 from, from, from <laughs> doing nothing. Doing nothing, just sitting here. <laughs> Nineteen miles left to go back to the office. We are in between Golden and Boulder. The car says thirty-eight miles of range left. Now as we dip lower and lower, one thing I'm noticing is this blue bar that's our potential acceleration also dips lower and lower. So we used to have hundred percent potential acceleration. Now it's creeping down toward ninety. It's going into kind of like a self-preservation mode as we really start to max it out. I've got one more huge hill. This one I'm going up right now. Alright, so we are seven miles from the office. The car says we have oh, limited convenience function. So it's starting to uh, go into, oh my god, save my soul mode. There you go, I've got a little check mark there. Um, 26 miles of range remaining. I don't know what that is in percentage because it doesn't tell me, but look at here on the screen, energy flow. I've got these little bars, there's 10 of them. I have two left, but it's been two left for a while now, so I'm guessing it's closer to 15 or 16% of battery remaining. And if I try to change modes, look, Eco and Eco Plus. Normal is now blurred out completely. <laughs> so 
So since we started and I reset our odometer, we've gone 164 miles, averaging 4.8 miles per kilowatt hour, three hours, 59 minutes. But the really interesting thing is, since the last charge, which was in golden to 97%, we've gone 132 miles with an average speed of 44 miles an hour and five miles per kilowatt hour. So we beat the EPA range going straight up a mountain and back down. That's pretty cool. You know, I'm wondering if we would have made it without topping up, and we topped up, what, 20%? Yeah, and if we have under 10% of battery remaining, there's no way. Once again, guys, electric cars are all about range, <laughs> range, range. But having said that, why don't we go inside and score it? Tommy, let's talk about the scoring, how we score the Loveland Trials. And guys, keep in mind, we're doing this into the future, so the perfect score is going to be an electric vehicle 20 years from now. So this scoring scale is very hard. Right. But there are basically three categories and a subjective with a maximum of 100 points that any electric car can score. And there's 30 points assigned for range, 30 points assigned for charging, and 30 points assigned for autonomy. And then me and Tommy get to score 10 points about what we think about the vehicle. So why don't you explain it, Tommy, because it is a little complicated and hard. So this is our first category. This is the range category. So it's like my dad mentioned, 30 points possible in this category. And basically the goal is to get back to the office with 300 miles remaining. So the effective range is gonna have to be actually well above 300 miles if the vehicle is gonna make it back to the office with over 300 miles remaining for a perfect 30 points. Yeah. Realistically, the vehicle would have to have 450 miles of range or more, maybe 500, yeah. to make it back with 300. So we're, once again, scoring for potentially cars 20 years from now right. because we want to keep this going as long as possible. So explain the rest. So the next category is actually on a different sheet. <laughs> and here it is. So it's charging. Now this is a huge category because you can have a somewhat crummy range, but if you can charge up super quickly, that range becomes less of an important factor. And it will going forward and more charging stations pop up. So charging is a big deal. And we're going based off what most of US consumers are used to, which is gasoline speeds. So a perfect score is 80% of recharge in just five minutes. Once again, this is a completely unattainable score right now in terms of the automotive industry, the EV industry. But going forward, hopefully, that's what we can reach in the near future. So it starts at five minutes for a perfect score all the way down to 60 minutes for zero. Yep. All right, now let's talk about autonomy. And that one's actually very straightforward because, well, why don't you explain? Yep, so you get six points for every level of autonomy. Uh, the Society of Automotive Engineers came together and set up five levels of autonomy. Level one basically being adaptive cruise control and lane keep, so uh, assistance features. Five being, okay, you can, plug a, a, uh, something into the vehicle, it'll take you where you need to go, there's no steering wheel, there's no intervention. Yeah, and it'll do it all the time without any emergency help from yeah. the driver. So let's talk about the e-golf and how it scored. Right, so the e-golf. E the best score, of course, is... <laughs> let's start from the, oh, no. the e-golf. Here we go, the best score, of course. <laughs> let's start from the e-golf. Is there from there? <laughs> All right, let's score the e-golf on the Loveland Trials. All right, Tommy, uh, we can assign 10 points, right? So now we've got up to 90 points and a perfect score plus 10 from us, so that would make it for 100. So we have to score the e-golf. So let's start with range. Here you go. Right, so range. What did we return back to the office with? Well, like I said, a perfect score would be returning back to the office with 300 miles of range. We actually made it back here with, let me grab a different 18. 10. Yes, 18. So of a maximum of 300 miles of range, that gives us a score of 1.8 with an asterisk because we technically had to recharge in golden. So, I mean, it, judge that as you may, uh, we're not going to allow other vehicles to do that. This is a California compliance car, so we kind of gave it a little bit of an easier time. But if we had done it on one charge, it would have been 1.8. Yeah, so 1.8 points, which is not great out of 30. Right. All right, let's go to the next category. So the next category is going to be our recharge times. Volkswagen says that the e-Golf can recharge 80% of its battery in 60 minutes which, if you based on our scale, is not really acceptable, uh, especially going forward. So that's gonna give it a recharge score of zero. Once again, this is a very hard test, right? Yeah. So in that category, 
Uh, it's going to get it's it's, zero. It's, it's going to get zero points. Okay, and now we come to autonomy. Now the Volkswagen does have adaptive cruise control, which works pretty well, and it does have lane assist. In this case, it's less of a full driving system and more of an assistant. You know, it's not going to be a hands off even for thirty seconds or a minute like the Tesla is. So that's level one autonomy, which gives it a score of six. Six points, yeah, because it's very, it's the very beginning of autonomy. So right. we're looking at. Just to start, level one, because it does have lane keep and it does have adaptive cruise uh, control. Uh, just fine. Auto's fine. Autonomy. <laughs> All right. Okay, so six uh, it's level, oh wow, here we go. Level one, which equals? Six points. Six points. Now, what about your subjective score? I'm going to give it, uh, I like the car a lot. I think it's an electric golf, which is a great thing. So I'm going to score it at six points, Tommy. That's that's out of ten, of course. So, so this is going to be subjective. Yep. And I'm going to give it six. So R is going to be you. Yep. You're going to give it six. Yep. How about you? Now, I'm actually going to score it pretty high because I really like the e-golf. I like the way it drives. It's exceptionally well made. It's very quiet. The convenience features are easy to use. It's just a great fun little car to drive. So I'm actually going to give it a score of eight. Now we're going to average these out, which of course comes to seven. So let's do the math on the total score here. So we have seven, seven for our subjective plus, plus six, six. six for the autonomy plus zero for, plus recharge. Zero for the recharge rate plus 1.8 1.8 asterisk for the range, which gives us a total score of, drum roll please, 13, 14, 14.8. 14 Wahoo, now that's a very low score out of 100, Tommy. Right. Uh, but keep in mind, once again, we are gonna be doing this hopefully for the next 10, 20 years, so as electric cars get better, uh, this score should increase. Let's head back out and close it up. Well, there you have it. The e-Golf has taken on the world's toughest electric car test. Yeah, and it passed-ish. We did have to cheat in Golden. Yeah, I'm not sure it passed, but come back again when we get the Kia Nero, and this time we're going to take it up and down the mountain without charging it to see how that one does. As always, this is Roman. And Tommy, head over to tflcar.com for more EV torture tests. You know how much range I got left? How much? 150 miles. I have 18. <laughs>